All right, so today I got bored, and I felt like doing a painting of someone's face. I couldn't figure out whose, so I'm going to do Jay and Silent Bob. Uh, in order to do this, I have a canvas board, which I have jezzoed over an old drawing that was on it. I was going to paint it, but I never did, so I jezzoed over it. Uh, I'm going to use this makeshift palette. A random assortment of brushes, some linseed oil, and water mixable oil colors. Uh, basically, these are oil paints, but they are water soluble, so it gets rid of my need to use turpentine. Um, I just use water, and that can thin it, and it can clean it off the brushes and all things that you would normally use turpentine to do. So, yeah, that should be it. Let's begin. Okay, as a rule of thumb, I like to always have white and black on my palette. Um, white is always a lightener and black is always a darkener. Now, um, you can sometimes, depending on what your painting style is, use black sparingly and only use complementary colors but I'm lazy and uh, when you see the image again you'll notice that a lot of it is dark and in shadows and black. Now I'm going to do some changes from the initial color scheme because it uses green and almost all black and white. Um, well first I'm going to do the white. <sighs> okay. Now I'm going to put some titanium white and then I'm going to use some zinc white. I honestly don't know much of a difference yet. Uh, just as I'm going, sometimes I like one, sometimes I like the other. So I like having them both on my palette. That was just titanium white. You probably can't see due to the light on the thing. On the thingy. The camera. It's a laptop camera, so it's not the best. Now for some zinc white. It's a bit harder to get out of the tube, so I imagine it's a bit of a thicker white. It comes on heavier when I use it. Uh, okay, two little turds of that. Okay. Now some black. Okay. Now, in the picture, which you'll possibly see again in, you know, a bit of a distance, um, the original is a green photo with the two characters on it, Jay and Silent Bob. Um, but it's from Clerks too. So instead of using a green background, I'm going to use a purple background, which is made from purple and red, as we all remember from elementary school. Um, I'm going to use purple because in Clerks 2, uh, their uniforms were purple. Uh, and also because I happen to like cold blues and I have and uh, the red is a uh, skin color so it seems like it makes sense uh, I can I'm only gonna right now have the red and blue on my palette even though um, I may need yellow later on I don't now and I don't want to get confused so I'm gonna just leave it out of the equation for the time being as it is I'm still learning oil paint so my measurements are probably gonna be bad anyway so I'm probably gonna need to add more so yeah, as this goes on, we shall see. Urgh. Yes, I have a huge tube of red. It's the only one the store sold. Okay. So now I have a palette that looks like this. Now there's still some residue from older paints. But uh, you can see right there I have a couple collections of white, black, red, blue. Uh, I used a cobalt blue and I used a Alizarian crimson. I don't know how to say that, but crimson. All right. Oh, that's enough for that for now. Okay. Um, in this cup, I put the linseed oil. Um, linseed oil is basically uh, thinner and it makes a paint move better. If I were to apply this as is, the paint would be very thick. So I like using the linseed oil. Um, there's probably some painters out there that don't. 
there's probably others that use it a lot more than I do. Um, it just happens to be my preference and the amount I use it and all the rest. Um, what I'm going to do first is do a rough drawing or a rough placement in a sense of everything I want. So uh, what I'm going to do is, it's kind of hard to see, but maybe you can find the image online or maybe I'll post up the image separate or something. Um, you'll see that around the edge of the image, there's all dark. I'm going to keep that because I like the effect. Now also the characters, their bodies are almost all black. And in fact, most of the image is uh, black. It's a lot of negative space, as it's called. You know, In the art world, it's called negative space, if you don't know that much. Uh, yeah, there happens to be a hair on the canvas that's bothering me. But um, So I'm going to now apply some black. Uh, I'm going to apply this rather you know, lightly. Because I'm just right now kind of drafting in. I don't want to do anything too solid. I don't want to hurt my uh, product by starting with anything definite this early on. I'm using a uh, larger brush because, again, at this point it's almost just a wash for the image. And again, I'm starting with oil, so if there's better ways to do this and all the rest, go right ahead and do it the better way, because seriously, I don't know. I'm just doing this because I'm bored and happen to be doing this, so why not put it on camera? Uh, well, now I'm going to stop talking and probably do some type of speeding up process. Silent Bob, just trying to get the rough size. It seems like it's a little bit small. Let's see. Yes, that looks beautiful, doesn't it? I'm more concerned with their faces rather than their bodies, so I'm going to start moving everything out and down a little bit. Um, because uh, I want their heads to be large enough that I can get their details in if I want, which I think I want. I'm using the negative space in this area right here to try and shape this in here. So I see right here that there's that angle. Now I want to do that, get the brim in a little bit want that same shape, roughly. Uh, if anyone notices, this paintbrush is not the highest quality, and also I don't take care of it very well. So it's causing a lot of stroke-like effects on here. Um, but at the same time, it works well enough for the drafting stage. But it's not that smooth of a quality. But I'll uh, show later when I go and use the uh, rag, how I can get a very smooth quality. Uh, but then again, I may get rid of some of the textures. So depending on what you're after, you may or may not want to use that technique. And again, I'm YouTube learned. So if I'm garbage, say la vie.
Okay. One of the best and worst things about oil paints is that uh, they don't dry immediately. Let's put it that way. Um, so any mistake I've made at this point, I gotta just like pretty much paint over. That's why I did this layer so light. But um, what I found is that I'm not gonna necessarily just paint over it. It's going to blend in a little bit. Um, that's why at this point I want to do the paint so thin. Um, okay. Around his hat, I found that I did this initial angle a bit wrong. So what I'm going to try and do is go over that eventually and hope that that goes out right. Um, certain areas like within Jay's face are a little bit off to me. And uh, it's just going to be a series of reworking. Um, now with acrylic, it's just a paint right on top, and it's forgiving in that sense. With, what I found with oil is that um, when it comes to the blending areas, it's so much easier than acrylic, but it also has its other issues. So uh, I guess just keep that in mind as I go through the process. Now, I basically have a rough draft. It sort of gives you the effect of what the image is, but it's still very far from complete. Um, so... Now on to the next thing. Now I want to, as I said, turn all this green area into a type of purplish. Um, and I want to then blend that into the black. So that's the next step. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is make some purple. Okay, I never put purple on my palette, as you may remember. So, now I have red and I have blue. Let's use my palette knife and the palette and make them purple. Now, I've never been very efficient at doing this. But the best way to learn is through practice, right? Right. We seem to have a, some version of a purple, but it's very dark. Let's see, you can kind of see on the camera it comes up as purple. It looks even darker to my eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of white. Try and lighten it up a little. I'll even show you me lightening it up. Now that is a stereotypical purple. I think that that's sort of the movie's purple. May not be perfect, but eh, who cares anyway? I'm doing this for fun. Okay. But now we have a purple that I didn't have before. So let's scrape some of that palette knife off. In fact, let me take the rag beauty of a palette knife. It's clean. Makes me happy. Alright. I'll stick that in there. Now I'm going to use this brush. You know, someone else will tell you what type of brush it is, all the rest. I don't know. It's a brush. I bought it and I barely took care of it again. So its bristles are probably crap. But uh, yeah. I like the size and I'm going to play with it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And now I'm going to apply some purple. Enjoy. 